Good day, collectors and viewers. Social Distance Warrior is back, and today we're going to look at the notorious Imperial Death Trooper. Now, the Imperial Death Trooper is an interesting concept of a character. Uh, he wasn't in the original Star Wars films, but once Disney purchased Star Wars and the whole Lucasfilm brand from George Lucas in 2012, uh, they initially released the sequel trilogy movies. They announced those ones, and they said, okay, the Sequel trilogy movies are going to come out in two-year segments. So Episode 7 came out in 2015. And then there's going to be another movie, which would be Episode 8, which would be 2017. And then, of course, the final movie, Rise of Skywalker, which would be in 2019. Uh, they also announced that they'd be doing some standalone movies. In this case, they announced one called Rogue One. And Rogue One would be the whole theft of the Death Star plans what transpired from just before what we'd see in Star Wars A New Hope. Uh, and of course, the Imperial Death Trooper would make his debut in that movie. And he was a welcome design. He actually fits in really well with that whole design of the Stormtrooper. So he looks like a very, very dark version of the Stormtrooper. But they're taller. They're taller characters. And they're a lot more menacing. And you can see right off the offset from the beginning of Rogue One that these guys are not to be messed around with. They must be some sort of elite troops, a lot more dangerous than stormtroopers. Uh, I did notice right off the bat when we first saw them that um, they must be some sort of a different species. I think they're an alien species or something, some kind of a genetically modified human because they have some sort of dialect or speech when they're talking. They're mumbling together. I don't know if it's Imperial Code, or if they're actually aliens and talking in a different language. But we did notice that right off the offset. And of course, that made them interesting and fascinating as they were looking for Jin Erso when they captured Galen Erso there at the beginning of the movie. So, of course, we wouldn't have to wait long to get this character in action figure form. Uh, Rogue One came out in 2016. And of course, in 2016, we got some Rogue One merchandise as well, which was the norm for Star Wars stuff. Before they released a movie in the theaters, there's usually a release of some sort of a action figure line uh, to complement it just before it comes out. And in this case, it was no different. So our first release of the Imperial Death Trooper would be in a two-pack that came with Commander Pow, and that will be this guy over here. So this is our first introduction to this character in action figure form. Uh, and one thing that was very, very evident when the Star Wars figures first came out, um, just soon after the Disney purchase, that they went back to five points of articulation. And of course, if you were a collector at the time, this was a step backwards. It definitely wasn't a step forward. You were used to having a certain um, expectation out of your action figures. And in this case, you didn't get it with these ones. But the one thing that's nice about these characters, uh, in, even in that limited articulation pose, is that the sculpts were very, very done very well, very accurate. So they've come a long way um, over the years in getting the character aesthetic correct. And in this case, this character of the Death Trooper is very tall compared to the other action figures and definitely captures the look that he has in the movie. So if we bring that up close, we can have a nice close look at his head there. And you can see that on the one side, he does have uh, this attachment to his helmet, which is some kind of a viewfinder or something that he's got on there. And then right away, you'll notice that there's a slight different tint on his eyes. And then you'll notice the two little green um, dots there on the bottom of his chin where his breathing apparatus is. So... It gives it a nice distinct, distinct look, definitely with that black and uh, green look on there. Now, the head is on a ball, so you could take the head off if you wanted to, but the design on there is definitely accurate to what we see in the movie. If you look at that head, we can take it all the way around. We can see the similarities between this helmet and the Stormtrooper's helmet, so definitely you can tell right off the bat that it's an Imperial. So that's what he looks like all the way around, and of course, it's a nice menacing look to the character because the only other Imperials that we ever saw that were in a black outfit were Darth Vader and then TIE pilots and of course the Death Star troopers and the Death Star gunners. So this guy definitely falls into that range as well. And as we watch the movie, we find out more about him. So he's definitely a troop. You can see um, articulation wise. Again, we talked about the head being on a ball. So he came in that two pack. Uh, the arms move up and down. Both arms can hold that weapon that he comes with. He comes with a long extended blaster rifle there. You can see it definitely uh, has a nice um, sculpt to it. It's accurate to what he's holding in the movie, but because of that limited articulation, 
you can't have him grasp it with both hands, which sucks. But that's what we got at the time. That's were new Star Wars action figures, and this one was definitely a welcome one that fits in right into the Star Wars timeline that we all love, know and love the original trilogy. So that's his weapon. Okay, so as far as articulation on this guy here, again, we talked about the head being on a ball. So you have a ball joint there on the head. Arm articulation, they just move up and down. There's nothing to that. He doesn't have any articulation here at the waist, which is kind of interesting. Uh, he does have a belt piece here that is a separate piece. Uh, and, of course, these little clips that he's got on his belt are hanging over, so it gives it a nice, you know, um, look to it, different sculpt to it, and that runs all the way around. Nothing is removable there. It's fixed on. As far as leg articulation, his legs do go all the way up, and you can notice he does have um, holes on the bottom there to stick him on a stand, so both feet have that. So that's what he looks like, the Death an Imperial Death Trooper from the front, and then that's what he looks like underneath with the foot pegs, and then we can turn him to the side. That's what he looks like from the side, and then, of course, we turn him to the back, and he's got a definitely a very similar look to the Stormtrooper with the uh, little backpack or box here on the back. Very similar to the Stormtrooper design. And you can see the sculpting is nice. He does have some ribbed sculpting here in between his legs. So sculpt-wise, it's nice. It's just that it sucks that it's limited posability. But we would have our prayers answered very shortly. So that is our look at the two-pack original release that came with Commander Pow. So that two-pack version that we got with Commander Pow uh, would also see a, a single-figure release from the Rogue One line. And that's this one over here. We'll bring that character to the front. Now, it's exactly the same um, sculpt as the one that came with Com uh, Commander Pow, except this time they've put that pauldron slash, you know, armor on, that bandolier on the cross the front of him to make him slightly different from the, the two-pack release. So this single release is exactly the same character, and you can see how nice he looks on the card back there with the Rogue One um, logo there on the top left, and, of course, the nice picture of the Death Trooper over here. And then you can see the Death Trooper uh, photograph over here on the side. And then, of course, see these in there in the in the bubble. And these a lot of these figures came with these little gimmicky accessories that had nothing to do with anything in the movie. Would have been nice, you know, instead of doing that, just give us a stand or give us some sort of an accessory or, or building attachment that we can uh, build another character or build a scene or whatnot. That would have been a lot better use of those parts and I think would have contributed to people buying more. But... That's the single release of that Death Trooper. He's exactly the same, except he's got that uh, pauldron slash uh, bandolier on him there. And then if we turn that around to the back, we can just see what that looks like as well. And of course, there was an extra gimmick here as well where you could uh, download an app and then use that app to create explosions and effects, studio effects for your characters. The small little bio on these guys here on the back, uh, encased in specialized Stormtrooper armor with a dark ominous gleam death troopers are the elite soldiers of the imperial intelligence and serve as bodyguards and enforcers for director krennic so a nice little bio for these guys there as well in the back but that is the uh, single release uh, non-articulated death trooper so you wouldn't have to wait long to get another version of the imperial death trooper this was also in 2016 uh, this would be a single release that was part of the three three quarter inch black series line so hasbro did away with the vintage collection and started the black series with three three quarter inch and the six inch line and they continued the same uh look for both lines now there was a problem in acquiring this figure it wasn't as readily available as the six inch one especially in my neck of the woods here up in canada i only ever found them once i happened to walk into a walmart once just before christmas i think it was a week or two before christmas and lo and behold, they had some action figures, Black Series ones, um, three three quarter inch on the on a rack. It was like one of those little skids they put in the aisle way, and that's when this guy came home. So that's what he looks like in box, and you can see it's very very reminiscent and similar to the one that we get in the uh, six inch line. Exactly the same kind of look. Uh, he does come with two weapons, which is really nice, and it was nice to actually finally get an action figure that wasn't. Um, very limited in articulation this was the super articulated one that we're supposed to be used to that we were used to before they stopped that vintage collection line so over here on the top we see that it says the black series and then there's a nice you know profile picture there of the death trooper and then over here on the bottom it does say imperial death trooper and there he is in the packaging with the red background not much to see on this side just his name and then on the opposite side over here 
Same thing if you have them stored on your shelf or in the store shelf. It says Imperial Death Trooper. And it's very reminiscent to the, uh, the Black Series line, except that it's not numbered. So if we turn that around to the back, not much to see there. There's a lot of legal mumbo jumbo there, and it's in new, different languages. But it's just the same design as that Black Series line. So we do have that figure loose as well. We're going to look at him right now. So that Black Series 3.75 inch uh, Death Trooper is this guy over here. So right away, we'll notice one difference between this one and that one that was released in the two pack with Commander Pow, and that's that this one's got some more um, accessories put on him here. He does have the shoulder pauldron with the extra belt attachment that's on there uh, with the grenades sticking out on the front. It's actually a really nice design on this character, but you can see he's definitely a lot more appealing than the other one. This is kind of the one that we expected that we should have received right off the bat. And this is the definitive version of this character. He's definitely an awesome design. Again, they maintain that tall design. He's very tall and slender, just like he was in the movie. And he does have that uh, mysterious, dark appeal to him as well. You know that these guys are menacing just by seeing them in person or on screen, right? So as far as the helmet, it's very similar to the one that we just looked at. That was on the five points of articulation two-pack. But a little bit more design on that head, a little more detail on there as well, okay? Uh, the head is on a ball, so you can turn it side to side. And, of course, he does come with that extra accessory here with his shoulder pauldron. And then, of course, that bandolier that runs across the front of him there with the grenade sticking off the front. He does have his blaster in hand. We'll look at that in a little more detail as well. So this one's a slightly different color. It's more of a metal gray color. And there's more detail to it than the one that came with Commander Pow. Uh, it does have a little red a paint job there on the side as well. Dial in, probably telling you how much ammo you have left. But definitely a nice paint job, nice design, nice look to that character. As far as the character himself, again, we looked at the blaster pistol. I don't have that with me here. It's stored um, somewhere on the side. But he does have a pistol, but nowhere to store it. Unlike the Black Series 6-inch one that does have an extra spot here on the side where you can store it. But now we're going to look at the articulation on this guy here. So we do have that full ball joint swivel there at the top of his shoulder. So you have articulation on this guy. You can move his arm all the way out. You do have it at the elbow here as well. You can move that arm in and out any which way you want. And of course, you do have articulation here at the wrist. You can turn that around and you can have that added articulation of turning that wrist up and turning the wrist down. I know it's kind of hard to see because the black round, of course, is dark as well as the character. But if I turn them there a little bit where there's a little bit of a light background, you can kind of see how much articulation you have on this guy. So arm-wise, full articulation. As far as the waist, you can turn them side to side. You can go back and forth on this character as well. Nice added articulation. The belt is not removable. It's very similar to the other one there. It's kind of in between his waist and his uh, lower part of his chest slash stomach. As far as the legs, the legs, of course, have that added articulation as well. They do have a ball joint there at the hips as well where you can move his leg all the way up. It does have a cut there where you can turn him as well. And, of course, added articulation there at the knees. And then added articulation there at the ankles as well. So full articulation here on this version of the Death Troop. And he's definitely an awesome ultimate version of him. I'm not sure what else they can do for this guy to make him better. But that is the ultimate version of this guy here. And uh, let's have a look at him underneath here at the front. Underneath there he does have his foot pegs. And let's see if I can read the year on this guy. One foot says Lucasfilm Limited. The other foot says, bear with me there, uh, Hasbro. And it doesn't have a year on it, strangely. Not on the bottom of his feet. So that's what he looks like from the front. That's what he looks like from the side. You can see some extra paint detail here on his wrist there as well on the side. And then that's what he looks like from the back. So he's definitely a more updated sculpt. Uh, and definitely more menacing and awesome to have in that super articulated pose. Because as you can see with the ones that I have displayed over here, you can do a lot more with these guys uh, in your dioramas by being able to pose them properly. So that's our Death Trooper uh, in detail that came through the 3 3 quarter inch Black Series line. Now, one thing that was interested with the Star Wars figures at the time, they still had a lot of Force Awakens figures in the store. And that was probably contributing to the reason why you couldn't find some of these newer figures on the shelf. So a lot of them ended up going on clearance without even seeing them in the stores. I remember finding these guys on Walmart.ca for as low as a couple dollars a piece. And then being able to order 
I, I think I was able to order five or six of them and have, you know, have an army that's standing around uh, Krennic and having him in a diorama there, of course, in a Death Star or, or standing around Tarkin or whatnot. But definitely an awesome action figure. And um, I'm not sure how much better we can get than that. Okay, so we'd have to wait a couple of years. But Hasbro would reintroduce the vintage collection to us collectors. And then a lot of the original figures that first came out when they started the vintage collection were repacks of characters from the three three quarter inch line. And of course, the Imperial Death Trooper was one of them. And so he came on a Rogue One card back for the first time. So we finally got a Rogue One character on card. And this card back is phenomenal for this guy here. So it's exactly the same figure that we received on that Black Series uh, box that we just looked at previously to this one. So it's the same, same exact character, but you can see how much better he looks in there with a the nice orange the backdrop on there. And there's a nice picture of him from the movie uh, with the fire burning behind him. It's an awesome picture. And it, there, and of course, in the name pill, it says Imperial Death Trooper. And you can see the nice Star Wars Rogue One uh, logo there on the front and how awesome that looks like. Kenner logo here on the bottom, how awesome that looks like on card uh, to have in your collection as well if you're an on card collector. So that's what the Death Trooper looks like from the front. Can we turn that around to the back? We're going to notice that he is Vintage Collection number 127. And then, of course, there's some other characters that were available at the time as well. Uh, that's Han Solo from his uh, standalone movie, as well as Emphis Nest, and the Imperial Assault Tank Driver, and then the Imperial Death Trooper, uh, Supreme Leader Snoke, and a First Order Stormtrooper. So that's the card back for our Imperial Death Trooper. And that was one of the original release characters from the Vintage Collection line when it got re-released, VC 2.0. So as far as the character itself, we're not going to look at the character in detail. I will bring up a couple of the ones that I do have just to show you what he looks like when you pose him. So there is a nice posed version of the Imperial Death Trooper. And you can see how awesome he looks when you're able to hold that rifle with both hands and then position his head like he's about to aim or, or shoot at the rebels or at the enemy so that's what he looks like in a nice pose and that's exactly the same release that we'd get from the vintage collection line okay so we fast forward a few more years and then we get a show called the mandalorian and of course to our surprise in the mandalorian we get the second appearance of our imperial death trooper this time with moff gideon representing him on navarro when they had the big showdown with the Mandalorian. It was such a pleasant surprise to see because it kind of tied in the new Star Wars lore with the old Star Wars lore because Rogue One was before the original trilogy started. And of course, uh, the Mandalorian is five years after the original trilogy ended. So it was awesome to see the remnants of the Imperials that were left there, the remnant stormtroopers. And it was awesome to see that they still had death troopers and they looked just as menacing as they did in Rogue One. And we managed to get one there on the Rogue One card back as well. So in 2021, the, we get a vintage collection release of the Navarro playset. And it was a playset where you could reenact that showdown scene from the end of Mandalorian Season 1. And have a showdown there with the Death Troopers. And the Death Trooper was the included figure in that set. And he came carded on a Mandalorian card back. So we'll have a look at that guy over here. Now... Uh, he looks slightly different from the one that we saw from Rogue One or the one that we had on that Black Series uh, 3 3 quarter inch release. But you will notice right off the bat that it's exactly the same sculpt, just minus that um, shoulder pauldron slash bandolier that he was wearing. So this is just the design that he had directly out of that Mandalorian TV show there. You can see the nice movie still. So we see the nice Star Wars Mandalorian name pill there. Sorry, uh, title at the top there. And of course, the name pill there says Imperial Death Trooper uh, in brackets Navarro. So this is his version or appearance from Navarro. He comes with exactly the same accessories. He comes with a nice, you know, green pill there in the background behind him and behind his uh, name title there. And of course, here on the bottom, it says Kenner. So that's what he looks like from the front on card. And he was a pack in, of course, with that cantina. And then on the back here, we'll notice that he's VC number 220. So... My God, we're already in the 200s, but that is the um, Death Trooper. And then, of course, there's some other figures that were available at the time as well. Uh, Quill, Bib Fortuna, the Mithril, IG-11, Rebel Soldier from Hoth, uh, Bo-Katan, and, of course, Lobot. So those are some other characters that are available. And it's nice to see these options or characters on the back. It's just too bad that we 
use up this space here with the legal mumble jumbo and not more options or looks at figures but that's what we get on the card backs but it's nice at least they number them over here and that was the pack-in figure that came with the navarro playset so i just, so I just want wanted to show you a quick take on the sculpt without that shoulder pauldron or, or bandolier accessory on so you can see it's ex still exactly the same sculpt this one that comes with um on the mandalorian card back as the original release one uh, it just looks slightly different because he doesn't have that added accessory on so you can see the articulation that he does have here nothing uh different from the original one we looked at but it's nice to see him and gives you options compared to having him with the character on, with that shoulder pauldron on you can see a nice little difference there so you can have one with the pauldron slash bandolier on, and then you can have the other guys uh, assembled like this. And of course, you can use them in both those scenes. You can use them in a Rogue One scene, or you can use them in uh, the Mandalorian showdown scene there. So that's what he looks like without that bandolier on. And that's, of course, our definitive version of the Death Trooper. That's what we got. Uh, we've been lucky to get two releases of this guy on the Vintage Collection card. It would be like, would have been nice to have some sort of difference between the two of them, but I'm not complaining. It's nice to have this character um, on card from either movie, and that's our Imperial Death Trooper. So I did want to bring up a couple special mentions for this character as well. In 2020, so just before the release of the Vintage Collection uh, Imperial Death Trooper on the Mandalorian card back, we did get a carbonized collection version of the Death Trooper, and I wanted to bring them up separately because they have a different slight gloss to them than the original action figures. So I do have one over here. Now I wasn't collecting all of these guys just because they're at a higher price point. But if I was ever able to get any of these guys on sale, I said I'd pick one up and that's the Death Trooper in there. And you can see this is the original release of him on that a Mandalorian card back, the one that we see over here in the back. Uh, it's hard to see because it's more like a holographic or foil glaze to it, but it's nice to see that Mandalorian name pill there at the top, right? The logo there and then of course his name imperial death trooper and of course uh, it's exactly the same character but he does have a gloss to him to make him look like he's a carbonized version of the character and it does say on the front there carbonite graphite graphite um i guess you can say covering or or coating on the character if we turn that around to the back we'll notice that these guys aren't numbered because they aren't part of the a vintage collection uh main line they're like a sub line and there's a few other ones that were available there, the Mandalorian, Cara Dune, uh, the Remnant Star Trooper, and of course the Imperial Death Trooper. So I just wanted to bring that up, that they did release one of this guy on there, and it's exactly the same character, but uh, first time he was released on a Mandalorian card back. Uh, I would like to mention as well, we do did get another one in 2022. This time as part of the retro collection, I don't have the figure, we're going to throw a picture up. But we did get a retro collection version of the Death Trooper as well. Um, the retro collection, which is sculpting and pays homage to the original releases of Star Wars figures, uh, they're really nice. But in my opinion, you know, they kind of lost a little bit of their luster, a little bit of their appeal by uh, Hasbro continuously making them. So like in some cases, we'll get characters in that line that before we get them in the three three quarter inch vintage collection line. And that becomes a little bit... I guess you can say of a nuisance and I mean I don't think the market is as big on that line especially when those figures are practically on the same price point as a vintage collection character but they did make a death trooper version on the retro style there on the retro collection card back that you could pick up as well and that did come out in 2022 so it's the most recent pickup and you can potentially still grab it if that interests you if it does again that's to your own liking um, just for myself I think I'd probably like them to see to make less of those guys and then focus more on the vintage collection as well so that's it for the character in three three quarter inch form i did want to bring up he has had black series releases as well and actually really nice black series releases so in 2016 when they released the three three quarter inch one they did make a black series version of the imperial death trooper and that's this guy over here now this guy is awesome he's basically just a larger version of the one that we got in the vintage collection but he's got a lot, little bit more detail on there. You can see him holding his blaster rifle over here. And we're going to look at his articulation in a second. But he is menacing. He is tall. Uh, he does stand well, even though it's been a number of years now since he's come out. He definitely fits in nicely to the line. One thing I would have liked is if uh, the headpiece here, you can see the slight 
green tint on the eyes there. You can see it a little bit better than you can on the three three quarter inch one because the eyes are bigger. But the front part of his mask here, where he the breathing apparatus part here where he speaks out of, it's not quite as bright a green as the one that came in the vintage collection. I would have liked it, even though maybe this is a little bit more movie accurate. Uh, it definitely makes it stand out a little bit more when the color is different so that he's not just an all dark or all black color as the Imperial Death Trooper. So we'll just take out that rifle out of his hand just to have a look at it momentarily. And we can see sculpting on here is just like the three three quarter inch one with a little more detail. It does have some red paint there on the side on the counter. And then that's what it looks like from the other side there as well. So sculpt wise, it's nothing much to it. It's one plain a gray color there's no extra added colors on there they didn't paint the handle a different color or anything like that but that is the rifle that he came with he does also come with a pistol just like the three three quarter inch one does and there is a spot to store it here on his belt and that's exactly where i have mine so that can store there on the side it does have a little bit of a rubber loop to store his weapon and that is the blaster pistol that he comes with okay we'll put that aside there as well now let's look at the imperial death trooper and his detail now, of course, the head, articulation-wise, is on a ball joint. So you have full motion there on this head, looking all the way around, and you can pretty much position it pretty high up, pretty down low, which is awesome. Uh, as far as looking at that head close up, you can see what you're getting on there with the Death Trooper all the way around, okay? And, of course, articulation on his body, he does have that ball joint. So full articulation here at the shoulders. Now, uh, his shoulder pad does get in the way when you try to bring his arm all the way up. It is a softer plastic, but if you turn it to the side, you can get his arm up no problem. Uh, as far as articulation there at the elbow, same thing as the shoulder, ball joint there, and of course at the wrist here, all the way around, and then of course up and down as well. So you do have extra motion on there too. As far as articulation here at the waist, you can turn him side to side. You do have some motion up and down, not much, but some motion. He's nice and tall. And of course, that belt piece is a separate piece that's stuck in between uh, his waist and his hips. Uh, legs, of course, ball joint there as well at the hips, so you can pull them out. You can bend them there at the knee, full articulation at the knee, and of course, full articulation at the ankle. And one thing that was evident immediately on the Black Series figures, they got rocker ankles, which I love. Now, his boot kind of gets in the way there a little bit, but he still does have that added mobility of positioning him on the floor where he can have one foot, one foot standing back and not having to bend his leg all the way down or make him look uh, out of place without that added articulation. So that's what our Death Trooper looks like from the front. Okay, underneath his feet, you can see they do have pegs there. Holes to stick him on a stand or, or place him somewhere as well on the bottom. And of course, underneath there, it does say Hasbro Lucasfilm Limited. And then the other foot just has some numbering on there so no year on the bottom of this guy here and that's what he looks like from the front and we'll turn him to the side so we can have a look there that's what he looks like from the side and then of course on the back here and on the back similar to the three three quarter inch one he has that nice little box here on the back that's reminiscent to the one that comes with the stormtrooper and of course the extra added detail um, apparatus that he has there on the back and you can see what he looks like detail wise from the back so that's our black series release uh in 2016 so he did also come out in a three pack in 2016 it was a target exclusive that came with Jin urso and cassian andor now one thing i didn't like about some of these releases that were multi-packs and this is one of them Jin urso has been released already as a single card and now we're getting her in this three pack we're forced to buy this three pack and get another version of her uh, we definitely want another version of uh, Cassian Andor because that's a brand new sculpt. The single release was a completely different outfit. And this is the first time we see him in this outfit. And of course, you can see the face detail is not as good on Jin or on Cassian compared to what they can do today. But I picked up the set specifically for that Death Trooper because this version comes with that pauldron slash, you know, bandolier that's running across the front, which makes him a different character, slightly different than the one we have in the single release. So if you wanted to get him in that, with the extra accessories, you had to pick up the three pack that was a Target exclusive. And if you were lucky at some point, it went on clearance. If not, then you paid full price to get this character, which is a single release. This one, which is not a single release. And this one, which is a single release. Basically, um, three figures for the price of one. Well, three, fi three figures to get one for the price of three figures. So uh, not a fun 
place to be, but again, this is how some of the three packs were, and that's another version of that Death Trooper that came out in 2016. Okay, so just wanted to mention that we would get the Death Trooper released one more time in the Black Series line, this time in 2021 as part of the Archive Collection, so anybody that wasn't able to score him the first time, he got released in the Archive Collection. Of course, it's that same character as we see there, and it's nice to be able to get him in the line, and anybody that started collecting a little bit later is able to get this popular figure in their collection without having to spend an arm and a leg and trying to locate one of the ones that came out many years before. So that's going to do it for our review for the Death Trooper. I hope you've enjoyed it, and if you've stayed this long, I'm hoping that you got something out of it, and you can see the different versions of this guy, and even though he hasn't been around for much, for much, he hasn't been around a very long time, he's definitely a nice Star Wars character and fits into the Star Wars universe very well, and definitely a welcome addition to see him in The Mandalorian again, because it kind of legitimizes his appearance in the Star Wars movies and that he's lasted so long. So, again, thanks as always for watching. Uh, please like and subscribe, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Have a great day.